Welcome to the Zcast. I am Sebastian Wick, and today we are discussing transfers and common student inquiry, inquiries when transferring schools, specifically at USF and all over the country. Today, right, let's try that again. Okay. Hang on. Take two. Welcome to the Zcast. I am Sebastian Wick, and today we are discussing transfer students and common student inquiries when transferring schools, specifically at USF and all over the country. Today, we have a very insightful guest on the show, Idrissa Steven. Mr. Steven is a University of South Florida alumni, but currently works in undergraduate student retention and transfer student affairs. Working at six universities throughout his career, Mr. Steven is well-versed in student engagement and retention. So how are you today, Idrissa? I'm doing great. Thanks, Sebastian. Awesome. Um, so can you kind of outline a little bit about what you do at USF for transfer students or for student engagement in general? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, thanks for having me on to talk about this. Obviously, it's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. For sure. And, uh, and I work me. <laughs> in the Office of Academic Advocacy, which is a part of the Undergraduate Studies Unit. And what our office does is we serve all USF undergraduate students, but I specifically work with a transfer team that serves the transfer population coming into USF. And so we try to both proactively and reactively serve students across a variety of needs to make sure that they're able to stay on track with their degrees and make sure that they're able to get to graduation in a timely manner. Um, we've got a variety of tools that we use to do that, but primarily it's, you know, it's very data driven. And so we look at um, you know, different concerns that students have indicated. We look at academics and we try to read the landscape to make sure that students are able to navigate successfully through their time at USF. Okay. And all students are uh, able to kind of access this help. It's not like uh, like a probational kind of thing. If you're academically, I guess, not sound, you would be reaching out or something like that. No. So every undergraduate student that comes into USF is assigned an academic advocate mm -hmm. once they are basically through the first week of classes and, and formally enrolled. And so uh, transfer students are assigned to one of the transfer advocates on our team and that population, we follow that cohort of students through their journey at USF until graduation. Okay. And typically you have how many students, I guess, would be assigned to somebody like you, let's say? Uh, so it's based on your year of enrollment and so we sort of cycle through groups. Okay. Um, so currently I think I have a total caseload of about 5,000 students, but that's split between transfer students that entered the university in the 2020 calendar year and students that enter during the 2022 calendar year. Yeah, that's like kind of, I guess, around the pandemic era. So that's kind of, I know that totally like schools across the country lost enrollment right. and stuff like that, just just for the sheer fact that everyone's kind of fearful of what's going to happen. Absolutely. But did you notice maybe like as people are starting to uh, re-enroll in school, did you notice maybe an uptick in transfer rate as well or like more students you maybe have to reach out to this semester versus... 2020, 2019, I guess? Uh, so I wasn't in the role, and so we, we have anecdotal data that I have access to from what was happening at that time. I wasn't in the role in 2020, okay. although I was at USF. Um, and so what we do see is a shift in the concerns and then also an in increase in certain communications. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I mean, for example, is the group that was here in 2020 they were forced to be fully remote. And right. so all of their communication was essentially by email. All of their meetings were on Microsoft Teams. That interpersonal engagement wasn't really there face to face because it wasn't an option for most of those students. Now what we see with the students coming in in 2020 that have sort of gotten back into that routine of being able to have face to face interactions is more of a mix, right? So some folks still prefer that email communication. Mm -hmm. Some will be okay with a phone call or prefer a phone call and some will really feel the need to have an in-person conversation if that's available. And so we try to make all of those modalities available. And so you start to see a little bit of a shift in that communication across those groups coming mm -hmm. out of the pandemic. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the specific issues that are being addressed, I think the, the newer generation of transfer students that are coming in because of the experience through the pandemic are more likely to express when they have particular concerns or maybe are a little bit more alert mm -hmm. to when they need to request support or resources. Yeah, and they're a little bit more so. inclined to, to kind of reach out because it is easier online. Right. Definitely, I feel like just, just in terms of like, it's always tough to get an advisory meeting, I guess, here. Sure. In, in my experience, at least. So it's, it's perfect for that kind of outlet. 
Absolutely. And, and we've learned some lessons as well from the pandemic. You yeah. know, we've been able to expand, you know, access to services by having those remote elements that were not really readily available until they had to be. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, back pre-pandemic, we weren't necessarily seeing a ton of phone calls and Teams meetings and things. It was very much what academic advising looked like at that time, where it was you schedule an appointment, you come into the office, we sit down, we talk. If, mm -hmm. you know, if that's you know, a week out, it's a week out. Now we're able to really kind of get students in sometimes, you know, a day or two once they identify a concern because we have online appointments, we have online booking, and so everything is a little bit more fluid than it was a few years ago. A hundred percent, I see that. Um, I just wanted to ask too about kind of like with this transfer pool, um, I know that a lot of students, it looks, it's like, I think like seven million students are uh, in the 2020 2021 year we're in two-year universities sure and I kind of wanted to touch them on the fact that do you notice a lot of kids either coming from four-year universities um, or from just two-year universities like kind of do you notice maybe a difference between those kinds of students whether or not like it's maybe easier for them to transfer they have more concerns when they do reach out to you at the through these outlets or anything like that Sure. So, so two things on that. So the first part is, you know, when we think about transfer students, part of that is to realize that the bulk of the students we get, particularly here at USF, are transferring at junior level, yeah. right? And so coming out of that community college setting, even if they went into community college directly from high school, they're still a little bit older than other students who are having that first time in college experience at mm -hmm. 18 or 19. Um, and so they tend to be a little bit older. They tend to have a little bit more life experience. They tend to be working. Uh, they tend to have families. And so mm -hmm. demographically, it's different from what we see even with juniors who have already been through two years at USF that started as true freshmen. Um, and so that itself lends to a different variety of concerns and questions that they're going to be dealing with in terms of what may interfere with their academics. Mm -hmm. So that's the first part. Um, you know, and so to answer your second part, we are starting to see um, more likelihood to reach out and sort of be forthcoming about things like, hey, I'm, I'm having financial difficulty, okay. right? Um, I'm relying on financial aid to pay for my coursework, and if something interferes with that, I can't be a student at all. Mm -hmm. There's no middle ground. Um, you know, I have conflict with time. I have to work a full-time job. And I can't schedule classes when I have to be at work. Mm -hmm. And so I may not have options that I need to be able to get through my program, right? Even, even if I'm on, in a program that is meant to be online, if it's synchronous, there's class sessions when I have to be at work. Exactly. So that creates conflicts. Um, obviously then, you know, being caretakers. So I have children. When my kids are sick, I can't leave my sick children at home to come to class on campus. Right. You gotta make these sacrifices right. kind of thing, yeah. Or, or I have sick parents, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm the primary caretaker for my family. And so those concerns, things like that, that are, you know, maybe a little bit more what we would call adult yeah. in nature, right? <laughs> Life concerns that mm -hmm. are impacting academics, it's a little bit tougher to weed through those sorts of things because we as an institution don't necessarily have direct impact on those, right? We can't take care of your child, right? right? And we also can't tell you, hey, you have to be in class. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right, figure it out. And so there's a lot of sort of ebb and flow and conversation that we try to manage with the different resources at the university to support students across. But I think primarily what we've seen is more transparency and more willingness to say, hey, I, I can't get all of these pieces mm -hmm. to come together and, and I need help. And that is not something that's traditionally been characteristic of transfer students in this environment because again they've already they've already figured it out for two yeah. plus years mm -hmm. coming into this space um, where we do see some more variety is the other types of transfer students that we get so you know I work with a very heavy volume of Florida community college transfer students but we also have veterans that are coming out of that space and so they have an additional layer of things that they have to be concerned with in terms of their background experience their life how mm -hmm. they're financing school you know their personal experiences and what they're able to deal with we have international students who are coming in as transfers with credits and you know in addition to the shock from something out of the country. Um, yeah. Coming out of the country, yeah. right? They're also switching to a new school environment and having to adapt on the fly to what American university life is like. 
Um, you know, and then you just have other folks who are doing different things where mm -hmm. they've maybe been through a variety of schools. Maybe they were at a for-profit school and decided that wasn't for them or the school folded halfway through their program, right? right? And, so, and so you get this sort of pool of potential issues and it's really different for every student. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's an important part is being able to get students to articulate what it is that they are actually dealing with so that you can try to help them navigate solutions. Okay, cool. And I noticed just speaking on like other universities in general, I know that you've worked at quite a few sure. universities and just wanted to ask whether or not you think here is a lot better equipped, I guess, for maybe these transfer students or just student engagement in general. Because I don't know necessarily if you did work at transfer type oriented jobs at those other universities, but how kind of is USF different from others or kind of the same? So uh, I am biased. So yeah. Number one, right? I was I was a transfer Slightly. student that came to USF as an okay. undergrad, um, and, and that experience was very different from mm -hmm. the experience that undergrads are having now. I will say, um, the other part of that is that you know our office as a support resource is very unique. There is not an office of academic advocacy at any other university okay, that's that I'm aware of, yeah. right? So it's some, that was a, a homegrown USF model to support all of our students, and then having the transfer element of that is also very unique. And so transfer students will recognize that even if they don't know right mm -hmm. away that they have that resource available, when suddenly something arises and there's someone there to step in, that's not an experience transfer students are having yeah. at every institution. Mm -hmm. um, in my past experience, I have not had specific transfer-related roles, but of course I've worked with transfer students at every institution I've been at, and it's, it's different. You know, There are a lot of basic challenges that you run into as a transfer, whether that is getting your credits to transfer properly, whether that is having to balance that job and academics piece, um, you know, trying to figure out how to get your family life and your commute to, mm -hmm. to kind of work together. And, and there's not really any mandate for the university to address those concerns or to try to help you figure out how to do that. And right. so USF is very unique in that regard. Um, and like I said, that's something that has been innovated here at the university and continues now to build as a national model for, right, for right. other schools to try to, to replicate in some sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally understand everything you're saying, especially with the, I mean, credits was one of my biggest things coming in as a transfer student. I think it came in like two, three years ago. And just like, it felt like almost 50% of my credits weren't going to be transferred either because... I wasn't in school in Florida kind of thing, or I didn't go to community college, or I went to this university, which has such a different curriculum than ours. Um, but do you notice kind of like when people are reaching out to you in these uh, things, are they talking about credits mostly, or are they talking about maybe other issues? Is it more balance-wise? Like, I don't know if like maybe the credits, kind of the way you guys go about them, have changed throughout the, the two years or three years I've been here. So we have other offices that sort of work through a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, the credits, I mean, it's an underlying concern, but it's not necessarily the thing that we are working on as academic okay. advocates. So a student may come in and have the concern that, hey, my credits have it transferred from this college that I attended, which means I don't have the prerequisites for this course, mm -hmm. which means I can't register. Right, and the class is going to close, and then I'm going to be disrupted. So conversations like that sometimes are where we get involved, but there mm -hmm. are other support services, right? Admissions, obviously, is the starting point, and then for a lot of our students, the Office of Transfer Student Success also works with them through that initial transition process mm -hmm. to help them make sure that they've gotten credits in, to help them sort of maybe preview what they can expect to transition Okay. into the university. And so there's a few steps before typically the students get to us that deal with credit-specific things. And then the colleges do pick up some of that as well as far as transfer evaluations and things like that. Okay, all right. And so, yeah, those two, uh, like the, what did you say it was, the transfer student? The Office of Transfer Student Success? Yeah, so those two, that's, you're in like the, like almost like more of like the practical side of it and they're kind of in like the technical, rooted in the technical almost, is that... It's a good way kind to think of a about fair it. assessment. So the the Office of Transfer Student Success really picks up transfer students pre USF. Mm -hmm. uh, so they work with like our Fuse program, which has okay, an articulation yeah. process into USF for the Florida Community College system. 
they do a lot of sort of pre-advising for students thinking about majors and things that they may want to consider coming in. Mm -hmm. And then they provide some initial touch points for students when they get in as far as making sure they've gotten to orientation, helping them with right, who do I talk to, how do I find my advisor, those initial things. We do some of that sort of in the entrance to the university, but really what we are looking at is the, the holistic experience of being a student and mm -hmm. how that impacts your ability to get through your degree program and on to graduation. Right. So it's a very subtle difference, but we work with a ton of partners across the US, so across USF to get that done. Cool, yeah, I like how everything's kind of interconnected in that way. It is, it is pretty interesting to see. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that, like, you guys just recently had or s the transfer student week just happened mm -hmm. October 17th. I just wanted to maybe ask if there's any kind of other outlets you guys are providing or either other points of events that you maybe have in the future that you maybe want people to know about. So National Transfer Student Week is one of the big ones, and, and that is a strategically placed yeah. national <laughs> event. Um, and really that has to do with the thinking of how do we provide students with timely support, visibility, information, when they are ready to receive it coming into this new environment, right? So you're looking at week mm -hmm. eight, nine, right? So you've had a chance to sort of get in, figure out how things work, get into your classes. It's like right before you get into that midterm piece, right, right where you now are able to start thinking a little bit more consciously about do I want to get involved with organizations? Are there resources that I've been missing out on? Tutoring, <laughs> um, accessibility services, right? All of those sorts of things. And so what that week is designed to do is sort of right in that pocket when students have a little bit of brain space to yeah. start thinking about how to diversify their experience is we kind of want to make sure like, hey, here's some resources that you probably haven't had a chance to look at yet. Right, is one mm -hmm. part of it. And then the other part is to be able to help make that population more visible to the rest of the university and say like, hey, we've got a ton of transfer students here that are part of this community. You know, Make sure that you know, they're being included, make sure that you're talking to them about their experiences. Mm -hmm. Integrate well, for sure. Right, yeah. and get them integrated into the community. Because I mean, we're talking 45 up to 55, 60% of some of these classes coming yeah. in are transfer students. And mm -hmm. you, I mean, you wouldn't know it, necessarily day to day, but that transfer part is a huge part of our community that sometimes just mm -hmm. gets overlooked. Yeah, I know a lot of, I mean, uh, Hillsborough Community College in general, I mean, I know a lot of people here that have transferred from there specifically, but it's just, it's honestly crazy how it's literally almost feels like half the people here have transferred at some point and it's almost like two year degrees or something. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and some of them, you know, started at a community college, didn't necessarily finish an AA, but still, you know, chose to continue their academics here. And those mm -hmm. still count, you know, and then we talked about sort of the other learners who have come from different types of school situations, as well as our international students who yeah, are those... transferring here. You it's got to be the toughest, I feel like, one of the, the international or something like that. That's yeah. just two con entirely different countries and languages and all that stuff with it. Um, I'd say, is there any kind of last little advice you would want to give to maybe somebody as a transfer student, maybe in the middle of their career or at the beginning stages? Absolutely. Um, and so there's two things, right? Mm -hmm. The first part is, excuse me. No <laughs> <laughs> so there's two things mm -hmm. that I would say. The first thing is know that you have resources and that you have support at the university. You may not need all of them right away, but if there is something that you need to support your experience, you probably have it, right? And so just don't feel like you are without hope just because you don't know where that hope resides. Mm -hmm. The other part is don't wait until you're in crisis to try to start seeking those resources. And, right. and that is a tendency that transfer students have because of the experiences, right? Because they are already through two years of school that they've navigated successfully. Community college doesn't typically provide the same kind of supports that the university mm -hmm. environment provides. And so they've just been winging it for two years. And so they're like, oh, I'll just push through. And that is not necessarily a recipe for success in the mm -hmm. university environment. So the earlier you can sort of be proactive and reach out and ask a question, 
the more likely it is you'll be able to get somebody to get you in a situation for success because we certainly have tons of resources, but it's difficult when all of those folks who have been trying to push through have pushed themselves to the point of crisis and then all need access to the same services at the same time. Exactly. Because that puts a strain on the system and it, it makes it harder to be effective for them. And so, you know, we try to do outreach very early on in the student's career and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, we're here. Here are some folks that you may want to talk to early on. And when you see that email, read it. <laughs> exactly. I, I know you talked about kind of like before we were in here, you're talking about how it gets lost in students' emails and stuff like that. Do you guys have like maybe a social media channel or some kind of anything you're connected with in terms of that just to get the outreach out there more? We don't. We don't use social media, and it's, okay. and it's because of the nature of the work that our office is doing. Mm -hmm. Undergraduate Studies does have an Instagram, yeah. and so they'll highlight different events and activities that are going on and will sometimes be included in that. But because what we are doing is very intentional communication that is Inter about interpersonal kind of stuff, academics yeah. or you know very personal things that's not it doesn't necessarily lend itself to mass promotion right or to communication via social media right it's it's almost you know you would think about something like your emergency room like your emergency room is not going to promote themselves on social media right yeah. because what's the messaging they're going to be that's going to turn people on that's mm -hmm. there's nothing there right it's you want to know that they are there and they are reliable but there's not necessarily an easy story to tell right. about how you connect to that because that's not something that students want to talk about yeah it's it's right? always difficult it's always something like yeah like you said it's such a personal thing that yeah i feel like it's so hard to maneuver something like that when you're coming from a um, that kind of, I guess, uh, group on, on campus. Cause I just, it's just, I see all these like admissions, counseling, all these other like social media things. And it's almost too much sometimes I feel like too, it's a little bit overwhelming for students. So mm -hmm. I feel like that was like a good point in terms of like how you kind of run things over. over yeah. There. And, I, and I think, you know, compared to some of those other offices that you think about the nature of what they're trying to do and how mm -hmm. they work with students, some of those offices rely on volume exactly yeah. <laughs> to be able to accomplish their work. Right. And, and it kind of it sounds gross a little bit. Right. But admissions is really about getting students to be interested in the university and get their applications mm -hmm. in. And we want to make USF an attractive target for them. What we're doing is we're here to help students navigate and, and survive and then thrive exactly. in this environment. And that's not necessarily a public conversation that we want to have. Right? We can have some of that after the fact when we've been successful. Mm -hmm. And so there may be an opportunity to celebrate some of those successes. But as a student, if you've been through that, and even if you've been successful and you've gone on, you may not necessarily want to go relive that experience right. where you, you know, were struggling academically because you lost your job or because you were homeless or because you were going through a divorce or, you know, because you're on your fifth college and you just want to graduate. Exactly, and then <laughs> right. you're less inclined to ask for help because it's all out there kind right. of thing. And yeah. so, yeah, you know, it's just not a sexy social media yeah. narrative. It's kind of the, the point that I want to make there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, thank you for coming on. Um, I'd say I'm definitely going to be advocating for this, this whole, like, Make sure you check your emails because I know when I came here as a transfer, like I was talking about earlier with you, how I feel like maybe either it got lost in my email or something. I just feel like nobody ever kind of reached out and I did have to maneuver and kind of wing it, like you said, um, just coming from like another state. I transferred from the University of Tennessee mm -hmm. and just the whole like culture change, I guess, a little bit too was so much and I feel like if I did have somebody like I guess you to talk to kind of work my way through it at least um, I could have definitely I guess maybe even graduated earlier or <laughs> thought about some some different kind of areas of expertise or probably portfolio building things that I could have done and that's that's definitely a big thing I think for for students just to be coming in and for the university itself. Absolutely. And, and we try our best to be proactive, you know, and so mm -hmm. we do outreach sometimes multiple times, depending on what the student needs. But if you're talking to any of your resources, eventually you can navigate to the right source. Right. right. And so it's it's not necessarily, oh, find us, ask us. It's ask anybody. Right. Ask your faculty members. Mm -hmm. they, they will go find that resource for you. Right. Ask your academic advisor. We talk to academic advising daily. <laughs> they know yeah. how to, you know, 
direct students to us. Go talk to the counseling center. Go talk to, you know, the Center for Student Well-Being. Go talk to financial aid. They are all aware yeah. of our office and what we do. So, you know, just ra raise your hand, raise your voice, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to connect with you and get you taken care of. For sure, yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask for help when it's needed. Absolutely. For sure. All right, Adrisa, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thank you. The Zcast is a daily news podcast production of the students at the Zimmerman School of Advertising and Mass Communications at the University of South Florida, Tampa. Catch us tomorrow. Bye-bye.